Hi, I'm David Martone, Executive Chef at Classic Time Cooking School. Today on our show, we'll be making old-fashioned family breakfast. We have a wonderful array of things. We're going to make some uh, cantaloupe vehicle to hold cereal. We're going to make some French toast, Grandma Nina's soft-boiled eggs, fresh oatmeal, and some fresh squeezed orange juice. We have a real treat for you, so stay tuned and watch our breakfast show today. Hello, and welcome to Cooking Time. My name is David Martone. I'm the executive chef at Classic Time Cooking School in Westfield. And today we're going to talk about a lot of family tradition kind of stuff and um, just keeping old things that you um, have sentimental attachments to and breakfast. You know, what could be better than breakfast cooked by mom or dad or grandma or grandpa? So uh, I just want to show you a few things that I have um, that I've kept for a long time. My mother always made soft boiled eggs and uh, my kids actually call them Grandma Nina eggs. Um, when we were young, we called them Grandma Riffacy eggs because uh, my mother's maiden name is Riffacy. My mother has this big long name. The kids call her Nina for short, but her name is actually Antonina Josephina Doloresina Riffacy. So here's the original egg timer that I grew up with and um, this always meant a lot to me. I have a few other little things, one of our, one of our egg cups and uh, you'll see a little bit more how we're going to use this when I make the soft boiled eggs. My grandmother always made these wonderful desserts and, and breakfasts and things and instead of a, an electric beater she always had this. So you know this is uh, probably in my family now for uh, 50, 60 years at least. And uh, my mother also made some great little poached eggs. And um, you know, this is one, one of the beat up little pots that she made uh, poached eggs. You'd put water in the bottom and uh, then you'd, you'd put this little um, uh, top portion in, put a little melted butter. When that water was simmering, you could see little wisps of steam coming out. She'd crack an egg in there and then put the lid on and then this would cook for two or three minutes and we'd have these perfect little uh, poached eggs. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use my trusty egg timer and um, poach a couple of um, Grandma Nina eggs. We have some simmering water in the back here and we're just going to put these eggs in and we're going to let them go for three minutes. Turn over our trusty egg timer. I'll we'll have to keep watch on that. And um, I have a piece of toast that we're going to serve with that and I'll show you what we'll do with that in a couple of minutes. And um, next we're going to make another dish that my mother made. Now, you know, a lot of these things are, are just, I'm, I'm not really teaching you anything new. It, it, instead of teaching you to preserve some tradition. I've been talking a lot about tradition lately. So I've got another little pot here I'm going to put on and we're going to um, put some water. I've got a cup of water. Now I'm sure you have a million different uh, easier ways of doing this. Um, I'm just making some simple oatmeal, but I'm making the old fashioned oatmeal that you have to actually cook for five or ten minutes and a little pinch of salt in the water and when that comes to a simmer I'm going to stir in my uh, old fashioned uh, oats. Not quick oats, just the, the old fashioned uh, Quaker oats we always used and my mother always served that oatmeal on um, very cold days and now that um, you know, weather's changing a bit, you know, you might want to start thinking about some, um, some dishes that are a little bit more hearty for breakfast. Now the next one is um, one of my favorites. My mother always made this fabulous French toast and um, she used all kinds of breads. This is a, a nice soft um, loaf of bread. If you can get a loaf of brioche or a babka or uh, a challah, uh, wonderful, wonderful French toast with these. Also regular simple white bread, good old fashioned white bread works wonderfully. But um, this one I'm going to cut on a, on a bias and make some um, wider slices and I'm going to keep them a bit thick. A lot of different variations to French toast and now I'm starting to see these uh, wild recipes for stuffed French toast. We actually cut the slice double thickness, cut a pocket into it and stuff it with fruit or all kinds of things and, and cook it. But I'm, I'm being a little bit more of a traditionalist today and um, doing some stuff similar to what my mom did. Now the French toast that she made, always simply egg and we use some heavy cream sometimes instead of milk if you want it to get a little bit more decadent and a little bit of vanilla extract. A couple of eggs, 
little drizzle of some vanilla extract. Some people put cinnamon on their French toast. We always put cinnamon in the egg mixture. And today I'll go a little bit heavier and we'll do the little bit of heavy cream in that. In the meantime, let me warm up a, another pan here. Now we have this simmering. I can stir in my oats. Lower this down a bit. I'm going to let that cook nice and slow, giving it a little stir every now and again. I'm going to whisk my egg mixture together with my cinnamon and my heavy cream. Thin it out just a tiny bit with a little bit of milk. By adding the cinnamon right in this, you get a nice even mixture. Sometimes you uh, go to put the cinnamon on top and it gets a little clumped up, so you have to be careful. Let's see, my egg timer is telling me that my eggs are complete. So we can take those out. As you can see, one of them cracked a little bit, but that's not a problem because when they crack, the white immediately coagulates in the hot water and it kind of uh, fills in that little plug. So now that our saute pan is heated, put a little bit of butter in that. I am using a non-stick pan but it's not necessary. The uh, the idea about having it not stick is having your pan heated properly. If your pan is not heated totally, your egg will definitely stick. So using a non-stick pan will help, um, but if you're using a stainless pan or an aluminum pan, by all means make sure that the pan is hotter than you would think. If it's too cool, you're definitely going to get, no matter if it's eggs or chicken or anything you're cooking, that's when it's really going to stick. So we're going to dip our bread mixture in both sides, make sure it's coated well. Two pieces should be more than enough for a nice breakfast. I always want, remember these wonderful, wonderful breakfasts and um, my mother's family came from Sicily and somehow or other they settled in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. I have no idea how that possibly happened but um, everybody's got a story for how their family got someplace except me. I don't know, have no idea. Nobody can tell me. It's the one thing nobody can tell me how my mother's mother and father came from Sicily and somehow got to Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. And then they opened uh, vegetable markets. And um, they became known actually as uh, they were their, um, my mother's mother's maiden name was, was Renella. And um, Renella's Banana King of Lock Haven. Just a bizarre thing from Sicily to the Banana King in Lock Haven. Just keeping our uh, oatmeal moving a little bit. But anyway, because we. Um, because our family had these vegetable and fruit markets early on, everything always revolved around a lot of fresh fruits and a lot of fresh vegetables.